Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Shakespeare. We continue examining, exploring, and discussing uh, Hamlet, a play considered by many critics to be uh, Shakespeare's masterpiece, if not uh, the best literary work ever written. Uh, in We've seen how Shakespeare is, again, using all the dramatic devices in order to play with our expectation and anticipation as, as members of the audience, as people who watch. We uh, uh, expected something from scene one, and it, it turned out to be something a little bit different. And then scene two was starkly uh, in contrast with uh, scene one. And in scene three, uh, we'll move back, uh, uh, move to another scene with uh, some kind of similarity and dissimilarity, similarities and dissimilarities in terms of family relationships. Uh, in scene two, we were introduced to the king. We've seen how he was poetic, pedantic, you know, bombastic, uh, using language in, uh, in a way that is suitable to a king. This is how usually kings speak. Iambic pentameter, a pentameter, a very poetic language, uh, a blank verse, uh, well organized, well thought, well planned, well rehearsed. But when we did some kind of digging, we realized we felt that this is a highly paradoxical speech. Remember how he started saying that, I am sad because my brother is, is dead. And now I am marrying, not only marrying, I'm marrying his widow. And also I'm taking his crown. And then how he gave us one of the most disgusting images in the whole play with people celebrating in, in, during funeral and weeping in, 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 a, in, wedding, in a wedding or something. And I tried to summarize this in this uh, meme. Do you know this uh, little uh, uh, lady here, little girl? Uh, I, I wrote her name. What's her name? Uh, okay, anyway, I keep forgetting her name. Uh, Swedish, is she Swedish or Danish? She, she's a Swedish activist, environmental uh, environment activist. And it happened that in, in, in the UN, one of the conventions, she uh, saw Trump and Trump hates her and she also hates Trump. He used to make fun of her on Twitter and later on she uh, made fun of him and then look at how she's looking at him like ah she wants to eat him with her own eyes she's so angry because Trump is dumb he doesn't believe in climate change he doesn't believe in you know that uh, we are destroying uh, the environment so this is this is Claudia saying though yet of Hamlet our dear brother's death the memory be green one of them is, is enough, but though yet of Hamlet, our, our means my, but this is the regal we. Our dear brothers, death, the memory be green. And that it us befitted to bear our hearts in grief. I am sad. Therefore, I am marrying. And I'm marrying his, 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 his widow, etc. In this scene, we have Polonius's family. Remember, we have Hamlet. We have uh, Hamlet's, uh, Hamlet, Hamlet's father, who's dead now, and Hamlet's mother, Gertrude. And Hamlet's father was kind of replaced by his, uh, his uncle, his father-in-law now. And now we have Polonius. Uh, so in a sense, Hamlet is missing a father. Although, remember Polonius, ha Hamlet, our son. And that was like Hamlet saying, I'm too much in the sun. And now we have uh, uh, Polonius, his, brother, his son, uh, uh, Laertes, and his daughter, Ophelia. So all of a sudden, we move from this Hamlet and Hamlet's family to another parallel uh, a family that Shakespeare presents us here. Interesting dynamics. The mother is missing. Nobody mentions her. Not sure if she is ever mentioned in the whole play. We'll see about that. 
So Polonius, remember, why is he important? Because of two things. Remember, it was Laertes that the king first spoke to when he finished his speech. Not his wife, not his advisor, not even uh, Hamlet. It was Laertes. Very, very weird. Again, showing us that he is kind of trying to avoid Hamlet, to distance himself from Hamlet. So that's one. Number two, Polonius is the king's close advisor. His, his consultant, yani, they, his, his wazir, yani, his, his. okay. And probably most importantly, Ophelia is Hamlet's uh, girlfriend. She's Hamlet's beloved. Ophelia and Hamlet are in love. And we'll see how this uh, thing uh, goes on here. Now, we, when, when the scene opens, we have only Laertes and, uh, and Ophelia. And again, we are inside. This is a family. A family always shows warmth, you know, closeness. And among things that Laertes, uh, uh, whatever Laertes is saying here, he's, you know, trying to uh, say goodbye to his, remember he's leaving to France, he's saying goodbye, and he's giving her some advice. And the advice is, it basically is a concerned with Hamlet. Usually, I don't know, usually in, in, in plays like these, when a prince like Hamlet is in love with some woman below him, socially, probably the family is happy about this, because she's marrying up probably bringing them more riches, money, fortune. But here, I don't know why, because there was no, not, there was nothing, there was no communication between Hamlet and that. They, were, they weren't friends, they didn't speak to each other. I'm not sure how, whether they hated each other or whether there was anything between them. So Laertes says here, perhaps he loves you now. Maybe now, yeah, maybe. If you say he loves, if you say he loves you, maybe he does, but only now. The virtue of his will, but you must fear. Be careful, sister. Very, very brotherly advice. His greatness weighed. His will is not his own. Iratu ragbitu is not his own. He doesn't own himself. For he himself is subject to his birth. He is born a prince. Eventually, he's going to become possibly the, the to succeed the king, to become the, the next king. And when he is king, he doesn't choose. Usually marriage, marriage is arranged. The state arranges some kind of marriage between two countries, two royal families, or his parents, or his mom, for, for more political gain, for more political power, not only lo locally in the country, but also regionally. He may not, as unvalued persons do, carve for himself, for on his choice depends the safety and the health of the whole nation because he is a royal, a royal family. So be careful, he doesn't own his own will. His will is not his. And then he says, but be careful, if he leaves you when he becomes king or when his parents tell him don't go out with Ophelia, then weigh what loss your honor may stain. You will lose your honor, and you will stain your honor, and you will stain us, the family. If this, look at how the, the, the woman is usually treated as, you know, somebody giving order to. She's told what to think. She's told what to believe. She's even told what to feel and how to feel and who to love and who not to love. If with this credent ear you list his songs, remember, we, I told you the word the, in Hamlet, the word questions. Uh, ha, uh, has never been mentioned in any other play like in Hamlet. The word answer, the word memory, remember or memorize, and also the word ear, it has been mentioned so many times in, in the whole play. Because in, in a way, later on, we're going to realize that the king was, you know, in scene five, the king was poisoned by, you know, ear in his ear, uh, poison in his ear. But look at what Laertes is doing. He is kind of poisoning his sister not by actual poison, but by, you know, telling her what to do. 
or lose your heart or your chest treasure open. Fear it, Ophelia. Fear it, my dear sister. Beautiful, very brotherly. But does he have the right to do this? Does he have the right to believe that his sister is unintellectual, is stupid, is naive? Is he right? Is he correct? We'll see, we'll, we'll leave some time to talk about this later on. And now, there's something interesting, but if you look at the scene in the book, and again, please, you need to use the book I am using because you can follow the, the lines the, the exact way, and also you can read the, the very important commentary. Uh, if, look at this, the Laertes talks a lot in the whole play, in Shakespeare generally, women speak little, men speak a lot. They're always uh, dominating men. So, but here in, in an interesting way, Ophelia replies to him, says, she says, I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. I will take what you say into consideration. I'll, I'll put my heart. But good, my brother, my good brother, don't as some ungracious pastors do. He's saying, okay, you don't want me to love Hamlet, to be in love with Hamlet, but don't advise me, don't give me advice, and then you go and do the opposite because Laertes is going to France, and going to France at that time was taken as somebody who would go chase after women, you know, for parties, for drinking, for fun, not to do something, you know, worthy. So don't tell me not to love this man, and you go yourself run after women. And don't be like the reckless libertine himself, the primrose, the, uh, the primrose part of valiant thread, and breaks not his own trees, where he this like preaches gives advice but does not follow the same advice he he gives and very interestingly very beautifully here the moment she tries to give him advice the moment she tries to to question his you know his motives that moment she says, tries to tell him ah you're giving me advice but you're not following your own advice he suddenly remembers oh i'm running late i have to go oh fear me not don't worry don't worry about me i stay too long but here my father comes i need to go my father has just uh, come how is coming and then again the, the 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 this family relationship continues to be interesting the father before laertes leaves he gives him not like a piece of advice like a bucket of advice, like a lot of advice, a pile of, of advice. And if you go through this, very interesting, like, like our parents usually do. Do this, don't do that. Uh, talk to this, don't talk to that. Befriend this, don't befriend that. And I want you to go through and read some of these really interesting pieces of advice. Of entrance to a quarrel, he tells him there's something missing out. Don't start a quarrel. Don't be in a quarrel. Don't fight others. But being in if you are if you find yourself in one in in, in a quarrel in a fight in a, in a, you know bear it bear it that the opposed may be worthy يعني تبداش المشاعر بقول لك يعني اللهم انا اسالك ايش لا نسالك الحرب ايش الحديث ولكن نسالك الثبات if you if you are in a in a battle in a in a, in, in a quarrel there's no out of this. You need to be a brave man. Give beautiful advice. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Isma' al kul. Lakin tahkish al kul. Beautiful. I love this. Some of you may, may want to translate this fatherly advice. Give every man thine ear. Isghi lil jamia. Watahaddath lil qalil. But few. Thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Listen to people's advice or criticism, and don't judge others and many other things. Neither I love this. Neither a borrower nor a lender be. Let it die and let it die. For loan, look at this wisdom. For loan, oft loses itself and a friend. Is a dayanit. بتخسر الدين وبتخسر صاحبك. قبل 400 سنة. This is Shakespeare saying this. 
loan loses itself فتخسر فلوسك الدين القرض وتخسر صديقك and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry if you husbandry means here thrift being careful with money if you keep borrowing borrowing you're going to spend a lot of money this above all i love this to thine own self be true in, I, i find it very interesting that most of the wisdoms in hamlet were said by polonius ophelia's father laertes's father the king's advisor he's full of wisdom but he's a he's, he's a hypocrite as we probably were going to see later on look at how much advice he's giving and when when ophelia when when laertes left he told Ophelia, what did he tell you? What what were you talking about? He wants to know everything about his his kids. And again, he's now. Uh, she tells him uh, he told me not to to love uh, what's his name. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hamlet. And then Mary will thought, and he gives her yet more advice, but not in in a sense of advice like don't love Hamlet. Be careful, my sister. Like what did he say? This beautiful thing. Uh, but fear it, fear it, Ophelia, fear it, my dear sister. He tells her not to love Hamlet. You don't understand. Look at the language. How 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 condescending this is to women. How anti-feminist. How, how misogynistic this is. Because you you consider women to be too stupid to understand, too stupid to love, to care. To. Uh, have you uh, most free and bounteous you don't understand yourself so dearly and your honor your honor always and she he had and then he says what is between you give me up the truth what is between you and, and and hamlet he has my lord of late made many tenders of his affection to me he expressed his love to me look at this really rude uh, reaction horrible she says of his affection to me affection poof. you speak like a green girl you know so climate green the king's speech was green it say any then is dumb ma jafish any green means means naive ya laki min bint min bint sadija inexperienced gullible but look at this the language of the way he speaks affection poof. what are you talking about you know nothing about if, uh, affection unsifted in such perilous circumstance do you believe his tenders as you call them do you believe his tenders as you call them he even doesn't believe her he doesn't trust her i love the word sift me bara kelma sift sift ya min siv s i e v e sif c sev means Okay. Sev means al-ghurbal uh, sift al-fi'l minha yugharbil sift to sift something through انك تغربل الشيء يعني تنخل الشيء تختبر الشيء unsifted يعني without probably checking with me as your father you should tell me everything and again this is heartbreaking i really really always feel sad for Ophelia i don't know my lord what i should think moving this beautiful young lady full of life killing her opinion killing her heart removing her opinion her feelings and emotions i do not know my lord what i should think i don't know do you believe his tenders i don't know مش بس i don't know i don't know what i should think because whatever i say look at how little she talks and how much he talks and then i'll teach you Think yourself a baby that you have taken these tenders for true pay which are not sterling tender yourself more dearly and I'll come back to this a little bit but if you notice here if we have a little bit of in in this if you look at this I highlighted a couple of words here tender dearly pay sterling poor these are money money words words you know referring to financial transaction and then in this second 
uh, extract here, he also talks about the same issues here. Look at this. Ophelia, don't believe his vows, for they are brokers. You know, brokers, they seem so, money. Not for that die which their investments, investments is the smart money, sure. But mere implorations of unholy suits, breathing like sanctified and pious bonds, bonds or hood contracts money. The better to beguile, this is for all. I would not in plain terms from this time forth have you so slander my moment's leisure, so he so mercy, as to give words or talk with Hamid. Don't give him words, don't talk to him. Look to it, I charge you. I'm giving you my orders. I'm commanding you. But what is heartbreaking here is how Tinder, these tenders for true pay, tender yourself more dearly. Be, but he's not talking in a fatherly way. He's dealing with his daughter as a commodity, as, a, as an object, something to be sold, something to be, you know, auctioned, to be expensive in price. And then he tells her, don't give him wo words. Don't, don't give words or talk with the Lord Hamid. Again, I find it very, very weird, weird. For this, a man like this, it would be really cool to have his daughter, Ophelia, marry Hamlet and become the future queen. Why? I don't know. Is it the king? Did the king t tell him something about this? Or did he want to do something just to make the king like him more? And again comes Ophelia's uh, reaction and answer to this, I shall obey my Lord. So I don't know. I, I don't know what to think. I shall obey my Lord. And then when, uh, what's his name? Laertes gave her advice. He said, I shall, the effect of this good lesson, keep as watchman to my heart. I will keep it close to my heart. I watch it. It's it's so sad what's happening to Ophelia. It's so sad to anybody to tell to tell anybody to stop loving something or somebody. And in Shakespeare in Hamlet, we don't. There's no like there is evidence that they are trying to control her, the the brother and the father. There is evidence that she is submissive. You know, submissive khada. But is she trying to resist? Is she trying to do anything? Or is she 100% submissive? Is she trying to resist some of this? It, there, so far, at least so far, there is no clear evidence what's going on. That's why there's a question at the end I'll ask you. It's usually up to, uh, to the producer how much of a defiant young woman uh, 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 Ophelia should be. How much should, should you know, not by giving her more speech, if you give her more speech that you, you're changing Shakespeare, but at least by the body language, the movements, you know, her facial expression. When her brother was giving her the advice, how, how was she standing? How was she moving her body or hands or, or eyes or, you know, facial expression? When her father told her these things, how did she, you know, react physically, facially, bodily? That's why there is a question later on. So there is the commentary here. I'll give you some time to speak, and then we move to uh, the shorter scene later on. So on the surface, this is an interesting family, a functioning family. But both brother and sister are trying to control the girl, the lady. And this shows the interesting dynamics of, of Shakespeare himself, how he is introducing, remember, uh, the cold outside scene and then the warm inside with the uh, king and the queen and Hamlet and then another family to show us he, how Shakespeare is, is drawing on a domestic scene to introduce family dynamics as well as individual characteristics. This tells us a lot about uh, Laertes and Polonius and also tells us a, a lot about poor Ophelia. Initially, we see Ophelia lectured by her brother and then lectured by her 
uh, her father. Before he leaves, Laertes wants to warn Ophelia against Hamlet. He tells her, be careful, Hamlet doesn't own himself. He will not be free to marry you. His will is not his. And then, uh, uh, because again, his greatness, Hamlet's greatness, Wade, he, his will is not his own. He doesn't own himself, and you will lose your innocence, your virginity, and you will be shamed, and you will shame uh, the whole family. And again, this is the interesting note here from the book you have when she gives him, she warns him, ah, don't be a hypocrite, Give me, giving me advice and you're doing against them. You're do, doing something, uh, 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 you know, knowing he was going to France, you know, for adventure and for women, for perhaps. So the writer here in your book says, when Ophelia calls him on the fact that he's a hypocrite, Laertes remembers he suddenly has to leave. And again, Polonius hurries Laertes along, having noticed his children were in conversation. He asks Ophelia, what did he, what were you, both of you talking about? And she tells him Hamlet, and then she goes, he goes on ranting, giving again uh, uh, her advice not to talk to him, not advice, I would say. And this could be a difference. He's giving his son advice. He's sending him out to Paris to do whatever he wants with women and adventures and, you know, and drinking and fighting and quarrels, probably giving him more money. But with the daughter, no, you can't do that. Stay at home. Be careful. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know, the anti-feminist society here. So Polonius and his children uh, uh, appear to be caring and, and close, but in reality, they are not. Both try to control uh, Ophelia. And the most heartbreaking thing is that Pol uh, Polonius orders Ophelia to cease all contact with Hamlet. Don't even talk to him. It's not only don't love him, don't even uh, 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 talk to him. Okay? In, in a sense, here it says the comment that because Ophelia tried to defend Hamlet again with Laertes, not with her father. She's, I, I think she was a little bit afraid of her father. So she's kind of an idealist like. Uh, like Hamlet. She is virtuous and as expected of a young woman, she feels compelled, obliged to love, uh, to obey her, uh, uh, her, her brother and more importantly her father. So Polonius, we understand, has no concern for his uh, do young daughter's happiness, even her future. He doesn't ask her how she feels. He doesn't ask her what she thinks. He doesn't ask her he doesn't ask her in the sense that uh, to, to listen to her. He metaphorically kills her, executes her, destroys her. Ophelia is duty bound to obey. And that, at that time, women should listen, uh, uh, were expected to listen to their, uh, to their parents. Okay? So these are the questions before, if you have any comment to say uh, that I'll be posting on Facebook. Uh, what do you think, optional mm -hmm. questions? Uh, what do you think of Polonius' family? I already mentioned some of this. What do you think of Ophelia's reaction? What she says to her brother, how she reacts to him, to his advice, especially about Hamlet, and what she says to her father, how she, how, how, how she reacts to her father's command to stop contacting Hamlet. And probably the more important question here, the most important question is number three. I just mentioned something about this. If you want to answer any, any of these questions, look at the third question. How could different productions of Hamlet present two different Ophelias? In one production, you could present Ophelia as weak, submissive, and meek, mindless, probably heartless. And in one, you could present her as a you know, good, young, trying to defiant and challenge her father, not by giving her extra lines of words, poetry, but again, <clears throat> by the way she reacts and the way her facial expressions change. Please say something before we move to uh, scene four. Anybody, if you have an idea and a comment or a question, feel free to contribute. Go on, yes. Reem. 
So I want to say um, that I actually find him partially correct. Um, so I think that Hamlet is the, the prince and the king to be, but um, her father, uh, like he isn't forcing her to, to love him. Uh, so he would be more near from the, the monarchy and the, the royal family. Um, I think Ophelia herself should have defended herself and her answers, but she didn't. Maybe because she's not sure of actually loving Hamlet. Mm. Um, oh, okay. This is my opinion until this first speak uh, for them. Maybe it'll, it'll change within the, the complement of the play and the, so, the coming scenes. Okay, I find this very interesting. So partly uh, it, uh, a brother gives advice to his sister, right? And if you're saying, I find this also interesting, but a little bit harsh, Reem, uh, blaming the victim. Don't ever blame the victim. Uh, uh, you're saying if Ophelia does like Hamlet or love him, she could have defended him. Not necessarily. If she is in, a, in an oppressive, controlling family with an authoritarian father, I don't think it would be easy for her to, uh, to, to defend Hamlet or to say no, to object. Maria? Okay, I want to say that it was interesting to read Bolognius, the character, because I have watched uh, in one of the versions of the play that Bolognius, uh, Bolognius was introduced as a, a humble and funny man who makes like weird and funny movements and reactions that make the audience laugh. But here he is like a wise and strict man. Uh, I don't know, I think I am curious to know why the, produ the producer did that for the, such a character. Uh, okay, when you watch, you have to be careful everybody, not only Mariam. Uh, Many of the productions try to deconstruct Shakespeare, to change a little bit, to change serious to funny, but uh, so you have to be careful. That's why I find the BBC productions to be the closest. Sadly, I tried to find the video, the production, uh, I think 19, 1982, Hamlet, Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, produced by the BBC. That's the closest. I think it's feel Tani uh, Mel Gibson, if you are you're familiar with Mel Gibson, he is he he plays Hamlet. That is also a good uh, production. And there is a third one. We can probably share these uh, productions together. Uh, but other than this, uh, I think in a sense, uh, uh, Polonius is, uh, I would say, I wouldn't say he's like a clown. He's the clown of uh, of, of the play. He's the advisor, but he makes fool of himself he sacrifices himself he for god's sake sacrifices his family his daughter for the king just to please the king we'll see how this how this develop develop but so far i think he is also presented as a little bit harsh heartless who somebody who doesn't care about his daughter's feelings and emotions somebody who's sending his daughter his son to france to have fun but Nothing for the daughter. Farid? Uh, I just want to say that maybe Bolognius knows that the, the king Claudius uh, did or, or was behind the death of the former king. And so he, he has fears that Hamlet we don't, might know. Okay, that, that's a very interesting I, idea. Yeah. Interesting idea, Arij, but we don't know it so far. I don't, uh, uh, I don't know. I, so guess. don't go there. Can you comment I on what we have? I I just uh, I just was thinking why and this was possible. If it is if something is not there in the text where with little evidence textual evidence, let's not spend a lot of time on that. But that's a very very interesting idea. Maybe he knows that it's dangerous. Maybe he knows that Hamlet's father was killed by by Claudius and that could maybe he's a contributor. Uh, uh, probably. Probably, maybe there is a plan to kill Hamlet. We don't know, but we focus on what we have in the picture. It's important sometimes what happens between the scenes and between the act is important. But if it is just an assumption, an idea, it's good to think about it, but don't waste a lot of time. Uh, think about it, consider it, relate it, connect it, link it, 
but don't waste all your time uh, uh, talking about that. But for the sake of time, we'll see others are raising their hands. We can see this if we have time at the end because I don't want to keep you very late. So in scene number four, remember what happened in, in scene two, Hamlet was told when he said, uh, Horatio, I see my father, Horatio, and where my Lord? And he said, in my mind's eye. And he told him, I saw him yesterday night. And he told him the story of the ghost and Hamlet decided to go see for after quizzing his friends and the guards. But he said something that we'll come back to again. There is, I doubt, some foul play. There's something not good. So we go back to the platforms, that platform, and it's dark, it's cold again. So look at the dynamic. Dark. Uh, outside, inside, inside, we go then outside. Interesting dynamics here. Uh, and when the scene opens, we have Hamlet, Horatio, and Marcellus on the platform, out, middle of the night. It's very cold, and they talk about the weather, they talk about the time. No, I will, will, I'll talk a, a little bit about interesting things Shakespeare does here about the time. When somebody says, what's the time? He says, in a bit, it's going to be 12. And then somebody else said, uh, no, it, it's already 12. I heard it. I heard the bell, the bell ring. For many people, this is, this is insignificant. And yes, it's not that important. But it does two important things. Number one, it tells the audience. Remember, plays like Hamlet were usually staged, performed outdoor during the day. So there is something that the Shakespeare and others have to do with the play in order to make it, you know, to make people at least think or imagine to remind the audience that it is this and that at a time. So now the audience have to think that this is cold, so they will be like, you know, and at the same time, it's going to, uh, to, to make them think it's dark already. The other thing, those people cannot agree on what time it is. Somebody said it's already uh, 12 and the other said no. It's not. So if they can't agree on simple things as what time it was, are they going, are we going to agree on the reality of, 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 of the ghost or what Hamlet is, what we think of Hamlet or what we think of Ophelia? And I think this is the nature of this whole play. It's more a play of questions. For God's sakes, again, the play opened with a question and then was followed by 15 other questions in just one scene. Who is there? So we are informed uh, here. Uh, we hear then the cannon, the artillery, and then Horatio asks Hamlet what was going on. And Hamlet tells him uh, that there, there is this habit about Denmark, that people drink a lot, and this is a horrible habit. It's a stereotype, but it's a, a true stereotype. And Hamlet expresses his disgust, his sickness, his condemnation of his country's habits of uh, over drinking. And at that time when Hamlet is talking about this, we forget for a moment because Hamlet is talking to us. We want, this is Hamlet's play. We want to listen to Hamlet talk. We want to hear Hamlet talk. We like ha talk, listening to him talk most often. So he's talking about what's going on in Denmark. We need to know more. And then all of a sudden, he is interrupted by when we forget, when the audience forgets that there is a ghost and they are waiting out for the ghost, the ghost enters, but it refuses to speak. We were told, remember, it only comes, it comes when uh, it comes to talk to the person it needs. So probably because there are other people around Hamlet, it doesn't speak. And then Hamlet prays. Interesting. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Be thou a spirit of health or a goblin damned. And Hamlet is still, you know, in doubt. Is this a good spirit or a bad goblin? Like a cub. It, it has some kind of foreshadowing called the last scene. Bring with thee as from heaven or blasts from hell. The whole thing is paradoxical here. Reminding us of the speech of the king. Be thy intense, wicked, or charitable. 
thou comes in such a questionable shape. Remember the word question, question, questions, questionable. That I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, king, father, royal dane. Oh, answer me. Ajibni, talk to me. Let me not burst in ignorance. But till why thy canonized bones hurst in death have burst their, their sermons? Why the sepulchre wherein we saw thee quietly interned? We buried you already. You are dead. Your six feet under hath orbed the thunderous and marble jaws to cast thee up again. Why are you out of your so he recognizes him as his father. So those soldiers and Horatio were right when they said that a ghost looks like old Hamlet. And then Horatio says, it beckons to thee. Like a shirl, like it, it's, you know, beckon, beckon like, the, like this. To sign, to signal, to gesture for somebody to come. Marcellus, look, with what courteous action it waves you to more removed, to a more removed ground. So probably assigning Kind of like telling Hamlet, let's go in a, in a place where there are no other people here. But don't go with it. I love what Mar Marcellus does here. Don't go, my, my, my uh, dear sir. And then Horatio, by no means, don't go. Uh, it will not speak. Then will I follow? I'll follow because it's not going to speak. Tom, my lord, why? What should be the fear? I don't set my life at a pen's fee. I don't care. I don't care about my life. Remember how he was, the, we'll see the translation, the recitation of, the, of his first. He, the man was tortured. He is in agony, this man. He wants answers. There are so many questions about his father. So far, there's no doubt about the death of his father, but the, his mother marrying, remarrying so soon to this man. This man. And for my soul, what can it do to that being a thing immortal as, as itself? We're all going to dead. My life means nothing. It waves me forth again. I will follow. And then Horatio, rightfully, like a friend, what if it tempts you uh, toward the, uh, what's that? Toward the, uh, the floor, the flood, my Lord, or to the dreadful summit of the cliff? What if takes you to the summit, you know, to the cliff, to the high place, and then you fall in the sea? Or what if it draws you to madness? It could, could make you mad. That looks so many fathoms to the sea and hears it roar beneath. It waves me still. Go on, Turkuni, I'll follow thee. You shall not go, my lord. My, I love what Marcellus is doing. You shall not go, my lord. He insists. He is afraid. He cares for his, his, his friends. Hold of your hands. Again, look at Hamlet, you know, warning here, threatening them. Hold of your hands. Be ruled, you, sh you shall not go. He warns everything. And the whole scene ends here. Hamlet saying, he waxes desperate with imagination. Horatio, let's follow. Tis not fit thus to obey him. We shall not, yes, he's the prince, but we shall not obey him and let him follow this strange uh, ghost that could be evil. Have after to what issue will this come? Horatio is wondering, I wonder what is going to come out of this. And probably the most, probably the second, third, some, you know, one of the, yeah, the top 10 lines in Hamlet is what Marcella says. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. It's a very, very famous quote. And again, people will play on this all the time. Something is rotten in the state of, uh, I don't know, uh, any state, any country. Something is rotten with America. Some, something is rotten in Gaza. Something is rotten with something. And Horatio, interestingly, changes into a you know, slightly religious guy. Heaven will direct us. يعني خليها على الله. نتكل. Marcellus is being more practical as a soldier. Nay, let's follow him. Let's follow him. And Marcellus says, let's follow. Let's be part of this, this protection. So again, we're going out to the cold battlements. 
uh, this contrast sharply with the domestic uh, scene earlier, two scenes earlier, uh, it's followed with a military scene out uh, uh, to the cold uh, battlements uh, uh, at the castle in the cold. And again, how it opens, it creates anticipation, you know, anticipation, anticipate, anticipation, no, I mean, it's tarakub, some kind of nervous, nervous anticipation as Hamlet, Horatio, wait, and Marcellus, uh, wait, watching, expecting. They talk about the time, they talk about the weather, and then they talk about the stereotypes, the horrible things that the king, remember, Fortinbras's son, young Fortinbras, was leading an army to attack Denmark, to, to regain, to restore the plot of land that old Hamlet talked. It's true that Claudius sent an ambassador to seek peace, to ask his uncle to stop him. But this is a man who is also not trying to do anything to defend the country, to, be, to make sure that uh, the country is well protected. Instead, the soldiers, the army, the people are spending the night singing and dancing and drinking and, and celebrating. And Hamlet is this uh, gusted here. And this is the canon, you know. It says here in the book that the canon in Madfa, at the time of Shakespeare, there was usually some, all of a sudden, somebody makes a huge sound. Boom. And indeed, the, all the actors and the audience alike would be startled. Oh my God, what's going on? In physio, yeah, and from the, the scene. And this is one of the dramatic devices uh, yeah, used here. So, the people are uh, drinking and carousing, you know, singing and spending the night uh, instead of trying to be, you know, uh, wary and cautious. And this shows how this Claudius is not actually a man of government, a man of state. He's a man of business, a man of, of fun. There is excess, not just fun, there is excesses, like too much of fun in Claudius's court. Although Hamlet remarks that excessive drinking is a stereotypical trait of the Danes. It's become a, fit, a feature of characteristic of, of the Danish people. Hamlet claims that his countrymen gained this reputation honestly. Honestly. And this is called something in the mead hall. Mead, some kind of uh, uh, drinking, you know. So the Claudius is no exception. All courts were like this, but this court revels in it. Revels like spending most of the time drinking and having fun and celebrating. Hamlet appears to be disgusted by this tradition. Now, uh, some might think that why is Hamlet dying? Hamlet is the longest play. Why are you, instead of waiting, Yanni, what, what should happen in scene four is uh, they come to the castle waiting for the ghost, and then the ghost appears, and that's it. But no, this is not a digression, this is necessary. Because what happens is that while we are uh, awaiting, we listen more to Hamlet. We are told a lot about what's going on in the politics and the corruption and the, 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 the court and the king, the new king, how he is changing the whole country. But more importantly, dramatically, we are made to forget that it's called it's late at night, it's dark. We are made to forget that there is a ghost. So when the ghost appears all of a sudden, we kind of, oh my God. So we, we live the moment. We are terrified by the appearance of, of the ghost. And another important thing, Hamlet is different. Yes, he's young. Yes, he's rich. Yes, he's the prince. Yes, he's a university student. But he's not like Laertes. He's not like his uncle. He seeks the truth, much like Oedipus Rex. He doesn't like what the country is doing. He's very critical of his, his, his country's you know, uh, customs and, and, and habits. Hamlet is questioning himself and his motivations and his weakness. And as he contemplates, and as we want more and more of Hamlet, the ghost appears, interrupts him, and appears all of a sudden frightening us. The spirit, remember, comes abruptly and unexpectedly, although we are here for that. But because of this interesting digression, the audience are made temporarily to forget uh, about, about 
uh, uh, you know, the ghost. Ha Horatio sees it first, and Hamlet whispers a prayer, and Hamlet doesn't, uh, because it doesn't talk, he says, I'll call ye, uh, I'll call thee king, father, dane, royal, etc. doesn't reply, and it keeps reckoning, reckoning, you know, calling for Hamlet to follow. Heedless of danger, Hamlet does follow and warns his friends, I'll kill you if you try to stop me, despite the fact that Horatio says, don't follow, it could kill you, it could push you off the cliff, or it could drive you insane. But heedless of, of any danger, Hamlet follows. The ghost may be able to answer Hamlet's question. Hamlet is a man tormented by questions, unanswered questions. And he wants answers, even if it is from a ghost. Remember, it was Hamlet who said, I doubt fair, uh, foul play. It was Hamlet who questioned, are you from heaven or from hell? He threatens to kill anyone who tries to stop him, commands them uh, to stop, commands uh, his uh, Horatio and, they were, and, and Marcellus to, to stop, but they disagree despite the fact that, again, we know that this could be Satan, the devil in disguise. He throws caution to the wind, it was him who said, be thou a spirit of health or a goblin. Damn, because he wants answers to the questions. He seeks answers. And the ghost might satisfy him, might give him the answer. He struggles against the restraining hands of men. And we see that he is capable of great strength, determination, persistence, and energy. He's God. Two people can't even control him. And then they follow we come back to the lot to the extract I just mentioned you to end the scene and see what we have from you. Let's follow Marcellus. It is not fit thus to obey him. Have after to what issue will this come? I don't know what will come of this. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct us. Nay, let's follow exuant. When you see exuant, this is for more than one people exiting. But when one person exits, it's exit. Okay, so this is uh, Act 1, scenes 3 and scene, uh, scenes 3 and 4. Please, uh, we have, uh, we don't have much uh, time. If somebody, one or two, uh, uh, want to say something, please. Be very brief. Just a comment or two on scene four, not three. Especially if you didn't already speak. I'm wondering why Marcelo and Harry Hartio are very close to Hamlet and want him to be in good. And other than that, he has no power. He has no uh, money or anything. He's like uh, like any person in the kingdom without yeah. power. You need to go back to watch the, vid the other videos and read what we did with, he said, he's a prince. How did you know he has no power? He's the prince. Yes, he's a prince, but like, he is like, he wasn't the king, he's not the king. But he is the prince. And a prince is a second, but mostly second in line to the throne. Yes, but we are now seeing how cunning go, is his uncle by getting the, all the power and how he back, has no connection. Go back to scenes one and two, uh, yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, I just want to ask if the yeah yeah if the former uh, uh, if the former uh, king's death was shown as a normal death, why is Hamlet so anxious about meeting the the ghost? If I would understand him more clearly if if it was uh, actually shown that the king was killed, not uh, dead normally or naturally. That is all. That is interesting. The, the first thing is that so far Hamlet doesn't uh, doubt anything. He doesn't know. Nobody knows actually. No, nobody, you know. Uh, uh, and but if somebody tells you, hey, there is a ghost. You, it looks like your grandfather or your grandmother, you, you want to discover. And this is, a, this is a noble man, like Oedipus Rex. Remember Oedipus Rex? Somebody told him, don't go after the, uh, 
You know, the oracles, don't listen to the oracles. But he says, I want to know the truth. Usually a noble person wants the truth, no matter what it is. So this is part of the truth. The questions could be related to, you know, basically to his mother uh, uh, so far, why she remarried, why she remarried so fast, or why, or why he lost the crown. Although, again, we don't know. He doesn't tell us he was sad about, uh, about him not becoming uh, the king. So let's wait and see how things develop. But for the sake of time, I want uh, to tell you what you want to Mazbut? Hello? Who wants to recite? Yes, me. Tayyip, uh, somebody read the first. I mean, in the first. Yara. Yara. Uh, should I open the group? Just give me a minute. Yes, uh, Doctor. And Doctor. Yara, Raid, and? Asir. Ahmed. No, I mean, I said to them, I'll read. I mean, I read to them, I told them, read. Um, in the first comment, Darin Khalifa. Is Darin there? Usman is not in the group, Doctor. Yes, Doctor. If you don't want to put it in the group, don't tell us what you want to do. I'm here, Doctor, but I practiced the uh, first part, just. When I tell you practice something, you practice it all. If you don't do it all, you don't do it, yeah, Darin. خلونيش أنا أعتمد يعني أقول okay I'm depending on you to do something and then all of a sudden you don't do it. أنا حكيت في المنشون حقرها بس ما رديتش عليا. مش مشكلة يعني هم رديت علي يعني you you replied to my post. Yes I'm ready. طيب we'll see Raed first and then where is the post I can see the post. Okay, Raid and Diara, read your uh, your uh, recitation. Uh, Raid, read until line 145, and then Yara complete from 145 until the end. Go on, Raid. Okay, no worries. صدوا وضع 